between two conflicting testimonies. Somebody is lying. Me getting warmed up in the chat studio, in the chat room. Okay. I'm actually just um, doing this segment because yesterday, with my first time streaming, actually doing a political stream, I talked about um, just the election, kind of where what was happening, pulled out the pamphlet, my ballot. I still got my ballot. I'm still looking through it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to turn this into a YouTube uh, video, so I just wanted to, to kind of set a primer for my lovers that this is uh, this video coming up. This was the first time that I did a streaming, um, and I had two followers. Shout out to Josh Ono, who uh, ended up, uh, or viewers. I had two viewers, and one of them became a follower, so I got 50%. That's very lovely. Okay, so thank you, my lovers. Um, I'll be back soon. We will get an actual full stream of something. Um, We'll see you soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nieces and nephews, lovers of all shapes and sizes, it's that time. Voting time. And my ballot is here. I don't want to show it too much, but my ballot's here. <clears throat> and we got some information on kind of what's going on in the nation right now. All right, let's see. This is from the New York Post. Let's see what they are saying to us. Early voting. I'm just going to look. Well, that, uh, you know, let's see. Early voting. Let's look up. I found an article earlier. Okay. We'll look at, we could look up a couple. Okay. With weeks to go before the 2020 presidential election, 22 million Americans have already cast their votes with Democrats turning out early by a wide margin. Dun, dun, dun. Uh-oh, Trump. Let's, you better start fighting that, uh, getting, getting, Getting with that COVID-19 response. <laughs> Cause uh I don't know, man. You're gonna have to do some trickery on this one in uh if in order to win. Um, because when people didn't know who you were, I mean it's pretty obvious who you were before, but some people didn't know who you were who voted for you, and now they've seen pretty much who you are. I don't know. It's not looking good, mate. All right. Democrats have outnumbered Republicans at the polls so far by a two to one margin. That's not good. Now, but then keep in mind, um, Democrats won the popular vote by three million. So it really depends on where the voting is done. You know, the battleground states where it would matter the most, you know, obviously in the state I live in, um, they won Democrat and they're going to, it's a coastal city where, I, where I'm at. So it's gonna vote Democrat. So for the most part, you know, people voting for Trump in my state don't really matter. It's more kind of the states that Trump was able to win last time. Um, so let's look at the 2016 presidential election results really quickly. Okay, so voters, you, as you can see, um, Hillary Clinton got, you know, 65 almost 66 million where trump got around 63 million and so um if you're looking at um what the difference was even though uh hillary clinton got more votes trump won the electoral co uh, college by a wide margin because if you can see all these the little glips here is kind of a little mocking of the uh, nation represented in little circles. You can kind of see that middle America, you have Florida, you have Texas, um, you have states like Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio. These are places that could be won by uh, Democrats. 
I mean, not so much Florida and Texas historically, but like Michigan, Pennsylvania, um, and those were were not able to be secured um, by the Democrats. Iowa was not able to be secured by the Democrats. Um, Utah, Arizona. So you're seeing like Trump was able to pull off some wins in some you know states with lower populations, but their electoral votes um, had a big impact in him winning. So you know, obviously. When the polls were suggesting that Hillary Clinton had a higher chance to win, you know, I mean, if you were going by uh, popular votes, um, yeah, then she would have. But if you're going by the where those votes were going to count, then it, you know, then it made a difference. So, you know, um, in a lot of these states, it seems like uh, Biden is um, doing a lot better at this point. Um Uh, yeah, so let's look at the presidential polls. Um, we can see if we can find some states. And so, yeah, we're seeing a lot of those states um, that were red um, before are now looking blue. And then even some of these are looking purple, like it's a toss-up, like Pennsylvania, Ohio. So you have to see Iowa, right? But there's a lot of this country, Michigan, Wisconsin, that looks like lightly blue. Colorado, Arizona's looking like it's swinging. Texas is looking like it's swinging. Florida's looking like it's swinging. So it's really the electoral college is more you have to pay attention to because if it's about um, popular vote, then there's actually there's no doubt that um, Biden would win that. I mean, as Hillary did. I think um, Biden's more popular than Hillary. I think he's less distasteful, let's say that. Um, and so that's what we're kind of looking at. So when you look at the polls in terms of like what the average Americans are going to say, the average Americans is usually going to skew Democrat in the polls, you know, regardless, because most people are Democrats by default. Um, if they just pick one and they don't really have much of an ideology, I think like when you're a Republican, you have to kind of be a little bit more steadfast to it. You have to be more deliberate to, I think um, people default to, to being Democrats. Um, if they don't, if they live in a big city and they just never thought about it, or if you're Republican, it's because you probably grew up in a Republican household. So it's like you're just used to um, kind of uh, paying attention to the the Republican issues. So I mean, that's kind of where we are with with the two. It's like you know, this early voting it's favoring Democrats, but like in the last um, election. Uh, you saw that it just matters if it's those states that are um, that are going to get you the electoral votes that um, are going to get you a win. And it looks like Biden, um, barring any sort of kind of tomfoolery or, or you know, extra judicial like stuff, like where anything has to go to a courts or ballots are lost or something like that. If it's just a straightforward election, then it's pretty then it's pretty much. Uh, Biden's to lose at this point just because Trump is um, in, in able to respond to kind of real life threats. I mean, he's, he's great at talking a lot and um, putting on a show for the cameras, but when something real happens that needs to be, that needs real results, he can never um, prove real material results. Um, and that's just what COVID-19 is showing. Um, so, you know, I'm going to give my little opinion about voting and how I feel towards it um, in terms of, uh, you know, I definitely in the primary was a Bernie stan. Mm, I was, I, 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 you know, I feel like it, it, Bernie was a true centrist, um, honestly. I feel like the Democrats are extremists and the Republicans are extremists, especially all the corporate ones. There are a small group of justice Democrats who only take uh, money from their constituencies and they don't um, mingle their money with corporate uh, donations. So you can trust those people in terms of they'll probably fight for what they're saying they're fighting for because their money comes directly from people. Um, but for the most part, I think uh, the Democratic Party is radical. They're... they're radical towards the fact that they will always side for war funding um prison funding big business funding but uh, you know our, our our infrastructure is crumbling and they act like single payer health care is like like uh, this this red scare communist threat i mean even the democrats are, i mean the republicans for sure but the democrats are like they're pretty much it's pretty much the same thing like if you're talking about single-payer health care on, on mainstream media, 
they try to act like it's the devil itself and how will we pay for it and what what will we do if the insurance <laughs> the insurance companies crumble and they never no one on mainstream media ever goes um you know insurance isn't actually healthcare it's just the way you fund it that that's literally it that's all insurance is and all we're saying is why not have the government as a single payer fund it because it would be cheaper that's literally all it is and then but instead they for the last you know, I mean, there have been developed nations have had this for 60 years, but we for the last 60 years, they try to make it seem like if, 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 you know, the average person can get health care without going into financial debt, and if we don't um, make sure that the insurance companies have tons and tons of money, then goodness gracious, what, you know, I mean, insurance is a scam. Anybody, anybody who really pays attention to what insurance is when you vis-a-vis -vis what actual healthcare is. Insurance and healthcare don't really have anything to do with each other, but we've made them have something. To, no, you need insurance to, no, you don't need insurance. You don't need a private corporation insurance to administer healthcare. You need doctors and nurses to, all it is is payment. And they've conflated like the way you pay for healthcare with talking, making it, they've, they've made it a political thing when, when it's really actually just a health thing and a practicality thing, like just paying for, um, doing single payer healthcare, like whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you should like it more because it is it saves uh, more money. Um, but they act like the news media acts radical about it. They act like they act like the radical ones because single payer healthcare is tremendously reasonable, um, and and very not it's very moderate. Um, conservative um, the conservative governments in Canada um, deal with every conservative nation that has. Um, single payer healthcare that that's one thing like they're never going to take away cuz they're conservative or or liberal that's just not something that's going to happen but in America we make it that we basically make everything that we make abortion that way we we make being gay that way we make trans rights that we make everything like a left or right thing when it's like no that's just humanity right <laughs> like gay marriage like if two uh, people of the same sex want to get married why would anyone possibly care why would a reasonable person care but in in our system you know we've made that something political when it's a humanity thing to me it's just like oh you're just letting two people do what they want to do not what you're telling them i i would figure the big government position would be to tell you you couldn't get married i thought the small government was like ah, yeah just do what you want as long as y'all both agree i felt like that's see what i'm saying like i feel like um progressives tend to be the smallest government uh style people they want the least interference in someone's life. And I feel like conservatives want the most interference in someone's life, especially like conservatives, if they don't like what what um, you're doing, like if they don't like gayness, if they don't like smoking marijuana, if they don't like um, doing hard drugs, if they don't like, you know, be you uh, having gender dysphoria and, ha and, and having to transition to a, 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 another sex, you know they don't like any of this and, it, and and really for any reasonable person you're just like that's just people living their lives i don't know how it's hurting anyone but they done made it like oh no if someone i don't know gets an abortion then that's a problem like they everything like they want to interfere in everybody's decisions of their life like that's if someone's transitioning to a different sex that they feel that they are it doesn't affect, I don't know how it would affect you, but they make it affect them. Like, it, I don't know how two men in love getting married affects you, but they make it affect them. So I don't, so I, I don't, I don't really um, understand the, the, the whole um, small government thing. When they say small government, it almost seems like they the opposite. You want the government to interfere in almost anything that you don't like, or like, and, and it's, it tends to be arbitrary. Like, I, I'm sorry, but two guys getting married and going and living together, it's, it's so arbitrary. Like, of all the things you could be mad at, right? You could be mad at, like, government corruption or stealing or um, someone stealing something. Or you could be mad at rape or murder. But you choose to be mad at two dudes or two women who's choosing to do their own thing. You know what I mean? Like, that That to me is, like, it's the opposite way. So, you know, I, I don't know what that, that – that, that, I think it's, like, tends to be the opposite when the Republicans are, like, Hey, yo, what's up, Josh? I don't know. Um, no, nah, I mean, I'm just I'm talking about the Republicans that I know, homie. Like, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just talking about what I see on television and the, and the people that I know personally. I have people in my, I grew up in a Republican household, so I'm just talking about my personal experience, my anecdotal experience, 
and what I see when I'm watching television, what I see when I'm watching Ben Shapiro, what I see when I'm watching Steven Crowder, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what 99% of them are. I'm just saying all the media you put out, Rush Limbaugh, uh, Bill O'Reilly, they're all against this stuff. So pretty much that's kind of how I experienced it. But anyway, um, just looking at this result, it looks like at this point, Democrats are definitely, as far as early going, are looking like it's, a major, you know, they're turning out in higher numbers. It says in this New York Post two to one. <coughs> so what does that mean? What, how do I feel? Do I love um, uh, the Democrats or Republicans? Not really. I don't, I don't like Joe Biden. I don't, um, I don't feel like he's a tremendously honest human being, you know? I think he's a, the standard politician that over the years, um, people have become, you know, the stereotypical politician where they'll say whatever they want so that you like them in the, in the moment. That, but then when it comes time to legislate, um, put forth policy, it never really helps the average person. It really is more towards corporate um, interest. And I would say this across the board. Anybody who's taking corporate donations, whether it be a Republican or a Democrat, <clears throat> that's just how it's going to go. And I think just um, Joe Biden represents that. He's part of that um, demographic of politicians that we become used to, Nancy Pelosi, um, all, all of the ones that we, that we, the old school ones. I mean, we have, um, there are Democrats like Ro Khanna um, in our state, uh, Pramila Jayapal, people like that that you would call more justice Democrats, but Joe Biden doesn't represent that. He kind of represents the old guard. He's all about the uh, crime bill. Um, so kind of when, when we're talking about voting for him or when people are voting for him, I don't think a lot of them are really loving voting for him. Like I know if I would ever vote for Joe Biden, it's not because it's not you like him. And if anything, with someone like Joe Biden, you kind of, it's just better that he just doesn't talk because the more he talks, I don't really think he helps himself. But then you get his homie on the other side and it's like Donald Trump, really doesn't help himself when he talks <laughs> like i mean i mean i would say but i mean biden at least like has come out lately and been like cool with it he's been like um I, you know what sane or whatever he's you can get a kind of understand like relatively coherent but with um with dt i mean <laughs> boys off the deep end there's no there's no two ways about it i mean he'll, he'll be crazy um Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what, what's going on in the Florida, PA, and, and Michigan. It look, I mean, it looks right now, if you're looking at it, it looks like it's, it's, it's looking light blue. So, I mean, who knows? I mean, but I, I think, like, on, on, the, on the real, I just think people are voting for Biden right now, like, for the most part. I just think that's what's good, you know? I mean, uh, but let's see. Let's see. You got, you got a little... <clears throat> Oh, you try to you try to show me chop, <laughs> homie. You know it's funny too. I live in Seattle, so this this I, I go up here every day. So I don't know what you try you try to like make me think that this is what it's like and shit. I be driving up there, so that's 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 ridiculous. <laughs> but but good on this. But good on this on the, on the fear factor though. You good on trying to scare me. Hey, vote for Trump, bro. I don't fucking care. Like if you want to vote for like a crazy. Um... <laughs> Trump is a joke. He's a joker. You know that shit, right? He doesn't tell the truth. He literally all the all of the people you saying who are saying Trump, Trump, twenty twenty. Do you think he cares about you? He doesn't care about you. He cares about himself. He's never shown to not care about more than himself. He grifts pretty much every contractor who's ever worked with him. He's grifted them. You, it, it's it's well documented. So. <clears throat> homies with Jeffrey Epstein too. This is not good. <laughs> Fail, completely failed at COVID response. Over 200,000 deaths. And he's been joking with it, going back and forth, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. He, he's a clown. Anyway, so 